Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy PJ. Today, fortunately, I'm here with my man Javi. You know that. What's going on, man? What's up, PJ? How you been? Smooth, smooth. Smooth. Let's get to it, man. Let's get to it. So, where'd you grow up? Fall River, Mass. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so you lived so you lived a little bit um in Providence from what I'm what I'm aware of, right? So how was that? Sure. How was growing up over there? Providence, it's a lot of poverty, uh close communities. You know, everybody's close with each other. Down the street, you need some milk from this friendly neighbor, they're gonna get it to you. You know, my mom would make plates for the D boys. From the, the D boys. Corner. That's how Providence was for me. Okay. You know, uh, there was times where, you know, couldn't get the laundry done. Mom would wash it by hand just so I could have clean clothes the next day at school for mm -hmm. me. So it was rough and uh, I made it out. Yeah. So ultimately, you learned a lot about adversity and how to overcome. Exactly. Right? And it made you who you are at the end of the yep. day. How was it like transitioning to Fall River? It was very smooth. My dad had came from Providence in a long life of, you know, doing bad shit. Yep. And he finally changed his life around and he kind of showed me how to be more of a man, pretty much. And uh, at 12 years old, I moved to Fall River. Went through middle school, high yep. school over there. And yeah, we're right. here. So let's talk a little bit about high school, right? So you went to. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You went to Demon uh, Regional Vogue Tech High School, right? Yep. So how was that like? Yep. Where did you? What did you do in that program? So I'm actually a machinist. Okay. Right now currently, do this rap shit too. Word, yeah. On the side, yeah. So, I felt that. But uh, so there, there's called a vocational technical high school. Mm -hmm. So you go to co-op or not co-op? I'm sorry. You go to shop for two weeks. You go to regular school for two weeks. So for two weeks, I was doing math, sciences, English, those regular classes you go through in yep. school. And the other two weeks, I'll be in shop um, where I learned, you know, how to be a machinist. Um, I could pretty much make anything out of metal, wood, all types of materials, Damn. plastics, all types of shit. Where have you have you learned anything aside, like outside of um, that, like about life or anything yeah. like in that nature? Yeah. It's 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 crazy because I became more hands on after I graduated mm. from high school. So it wasn't until after that you actually got the full concept yeah. of okay. And now I'm currently working in the trade. I heard you. Okay. So had you attended St. A's? Like what's up with that? Because I've seen some pictures of you at oh. St. A's, right? So yeah, we keep down low. Okay. <laughs> what's up with Shout that? Shout out J C King for that one. <laughs> hey, memories I'll never forget. Mm. St. A's, beautiful high school, beautiful. Beautiful college, I'm sorry. Beautiful college. Yeah. Word. JC King. Okay. Yeah. Shout so out, bro. bro. <laughs> Shout out him. So, as far as music, let's hop into that. Um, who was the biggest inspiration for you? Were there inspirations at all? So many inspirations. Who was your favorite artist growing up? Uh, Wayne, Drake, Cole, Kendrick. Oh, so there's not just one. Miguel, Usher, Neo. Like, <laughs> there's a I list. listen to everything and anything. If it has anything to do with music. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. KZ. <laughs> Producer. Proud by KZ. Um, Star Child. That too. And Hobby. And myself, of course. Um, My inspiration. But what, what made you want to create music for yourself? It was like, it was a point in time where everybody mainstream was putting out garbage. And me and KZ was boys, of course, before. Yeah. Um, he was just doing this shit in his room before this studio even became anything, before we even made a name for ourselves, for real. Um, yeah, just on some funny shit, I was like, yo, Eli, I made a hook, let's lay this. And then he was like, all right, next day I went to his house, made the worst song I ever created in my life. If you want to listen to it, go all the way down to my SoundCloud, it's called... Yeah. Good Love. Future, uh, texted a girl. Future, you are a dog, bro. <laughs> he flew a girl out to a hotel, and she didn't want to. So now nah, you can swear, bro. You good? You're he didn't want to. She didn't want to give you no poom poom. <laughs> so bad man sent her away to the team. Nah, just kidding. He sent her away, bro, because she didn't want to fuck. Oh, some shit. dumb shit. He said, "I'm good, love." Through a text. 
because she was like, oh, that you shit got leaked? Chill still? I, yeah, you, didn't see, you don't remember? Nah, I don't it remember It was like 20, 2017, 2016. Yeah. A girl, he flew a girl out. She wanted to fuck. Long story short, he kicked her out. You know, you didn't, she didn't have a key, nothing, no flight back. Man, said she was, she was for the streets. And he said, I'm good, love, enjoy. Text her like that. So I was like, we good over here, love. Damn. We good over here, love. <laughs> enjoy. I was like, called KZ on some dumb shit. We made that song. And then that's where the shit started. Word. So that was the that was the start of the KZ and your relationship. You yeah. guys made My Eyes, which was, I would say, like a little EP that you guys did together, yep, a little yep. collaboration piece. Yeah. How did that even come about? I just kept recording. And honestly, it, was, it wasn't even like no theme. I just kept recording songs, recording songs, recording songs. And then I look at my my um, vault and I was like, yo, I have like 12 songs here. Why don't we just drop all of them mm. pretty much? Okay. So it wasn't just like, oh, these these songs were planned. No, no, those songs. songs those songs span anywhere from, like I said, the first one, in 2017, to when it dropped was like summer of 2018, I believe. Okay, cool, man. So let's hop into Party Pack too, because Party Pack is kind of where like Javi like stepped it up another level, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, what, how was the process for Party Pack compared to my eyes, and what has Party Pack shown you about the process of making a project? Party Pack was just one of those projects, man. It was super fun. Uh, you know, me and KZ would just think of something jumpy, but that was still us. Mm. Feel me? We didn't want to copy nobody. We wanted to make our own sound, but a party sound that could, like, I was making love songs more. A lot of melodizing and yep. melodies and all that shit. And then we was like, yo, this, like, I haven't made a song I can perform yet. Mm. So I was like, you know what? Let me make a song I could perform. Cause besides the music shit, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty, I'm an entertainer. So I was like, if I can't perform these songs, what's the point of even making them? Yeah. So then that's party pack happened. Boom. I believe that train kind of started with Sky High, because I made like my first drill song. Okay. Drill type song. Yeah. If, yeah. So then we started there, and that shit just took off from there. Yeah. Made so, a whole part two to that. Yeah, you did, and you um, also have a feature with Star Child on uh, the volume two. Mm -hmm. Volume one also That's had that me. Yeah. Um, volume one had No Cap, which was your biggest hit on the song on the album. Um, but my favorite track was Like That, and I've already expressed mm -hmm. it to you enough. How was that like making Like That in, in comparison to No Cap? Oh, it's, you just got to tap into different modes. Mm. I, I feel like I'm very versatile, not to toot my own horn. But it's like, like that it was like a, a dance hall -y type song. Like we said, we trying to make songs that was trying to get played in these bangers that we going to in the summer. Yep. Um, so we was like, all right, we transitioned from, we made like that first, actually. Like that was, had been recorded for a while. And we actually re-recorded it after all the other songs came. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like that has a first version and a second version. The second version is obviously out. Yep. And uh, no cap, you know, that was just me yeah. trying to be on some rap shit. Like I was like, I I gave him too much singing. Let's let's give him something different. Cause mm. that's what I am. Yeah, different versatile. How important is it? How essentially is it important for you to be versatile in your music and you know it's, overall it's as an artist? It's very. It's very. There's there's artists that stayed in the game because of how versatile they are and how skilled they are. Mm. The music has changed since since we was kids. Yeah, we're not listening to the same shit we was listening to in 2005. You got to stay on top of the ahead of, ahead of the curve mm. and just adapt to exactly. a different sound. Mm -hmm. For you, is it important for you to, to appease to your audience or to appease to that sound and adapt to it? I say I'm still I'm still I found my sound, but I'm still. I'm studying as I go along. I'm independent. Mm. I don't. I'm not signed to nobody. Yeah. So I I learned myself. Like, all right, the audience might like this type of song, but can I keep creating that type of song? Is it me? Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I might drop it just to show them I could really do this shit, but that's not me at the end of the day. Yeah. Like I'm gonna stay in my lane at right. the end of the day. When you record a song, right? When you first record a song, do you anticipate the song to blow, or is it just like? Every song is, is gonna blow. Like, where's your mindset as far as when every, the song is done? I've, I feel like I've improved every song. Every mm. song I record is something better than the last song I record. Whether it's in a different lane or whether it's in a different style, whether it's a different beat, I always improve somehow. Yeah. So, excuse me. It's like you can't. Re I can't really pinpoint something. Yeah. Cause it's always different every time it's I get always it. improving gradually yeah. improving 
I can say that too as far as listening to my eyes compared to the party pack. There's definitely a, a significance between the yeah. sound from my eyes and party pack. What made you want to adjust your sound to more of a melodic harmony type of feel? Uh, it was just what was natural. I feel like like when my voice is, I can do so much. Mm. So it's like, let me give them something I'm most comfortable with, and I can do this over and over and over again. Yeah. You know I mean, I felt that, man. Awkward. As far as the talent from here, right, and then trying to expand your connection building, how has that been? Because, you know, obviously meeting guys like KZ, meeting guys like Style Child, not meeting guys like Stubborn, right? Yeah. Are you able to learn a lot from these guys? Or legends, just... man. Legends. Every, we're all legends in the making, man. It's like, it's crazy to see the talent. I, I was telling Sal that uh you think you think you're the best in your city until you get out of your city mm. pretty much yeah and then you're like oh shit there's actually so much yeah. who's talented around me i'm not the only one and that's just locally too keep yeah. in mind this is still mass that we're talking about it's exactly. just two different shores um to to keep on keeping on conversation as far as mass goes what do you think is the best thing for us to to reach to a level where we're at a at a mainstream level i guess you can say where everybody notices us on a broader level it's it's like the people who's banded together now know know what they're doing. It's it's a support system. You gotta you gotta kinda gotta build each other up so somebody can get up there. It's like if my bro's closer to the rim, I'm gonna pass him the ball so he can mm -hmm. score. Yeah. Me? So it's like it's something like that idea. If if we keep kinda closing ourselves off as small cities, we we're not we're not big market. We're not a big market state. Do you think it takes one person? To get to that level, or do you think it takes? It a takes the people? right person to get to that level. The right person gets to that level, they're gonna put the rest of their state mm. on. But so elaborate on that because I, I, you know, a lot of people say it takes that one person, but do you think it takes a group of people to get to that point? Because even if it takes the right person, how do we even get to that point with that there's, as the leader? There's, I don't know many people that's doing this shit by themselves. There's always a group behind one person. Yeah. So, yeah, it, and yeah, you're right. It does take a group to get up there for mm. real. You can't do this shit by yourself, not for me. Yeah, I and, haven't met anybody. Nah, exactly. Um, and that comes with production too, right? So let's speak more about KZ and your relationship with KZ, right? But how has KZ um allowed you to improve in your sound, and what are some things that he's taught you about, you know, you about, you know, what I'm saying your music. K KZ reads artists like a book, and you don't even know it the whole time. So, since KZ has been working with me so long, we could go in here and bang out a song in 30 minutes. For real. If, yeah, if it's a good lock-in, we could go in here and make a song in 30 minutes. It's like, it's like, and it's crazy because I see him run through talent. It's like, I'm not just an artist to him. Like, we're actually brothers, for real. Yeah. So, like, I, I can see him working with different people, and it's the same. It's the same energy every time. He cares, he cares, he cares. And he's not going to let you put out anything bad. Yeah. So, he's like, he's going to build with you. But he's still going to let you be yourself at the end of the day. He's not going to make you. Because yeah. then that'd just be KZ times two. Not exactly. Not but if it's artist. in unison, that's exactly. that's the beautiful thing about it. I know this may seem like a, a vague question, but for you personally, what makes music so special? Music is special because... Uh, or what makes music special is the fact that you can be in a, uh, the worst mood of your life and listen to a song... And it can change your mood like in three minutes, two minutes, one minute, however long the song is. For me, I feel like music um, really adds color to life. Mm. Yeah, or, I feel like without music, it kind of be yeah ass. <laughs> I felt that for you, right? Yeah. How do you feel like you'll be able to change the game? I just bring a crazy impact, a crazy energy. Once Corona's done, these shows is about to be nuts for real. Um, what more can I say? I'm just me, I guess. I'm what the game's missing, I feel. For real. For you, um, you know, there's a lot to improve. There's a lot to, to build on. Um, but what are some things that you wish to achieve as far as music goes? Um, I just want to keep, like I said before, I feel like I improve every song. Mm. I don't want that to stop. You just want to keep it consistent, yeah. yeah. Cause, cause if I'm if I'm not focused on one thing, and I just focus on improving in wh whichever way it is, I'm gonna look back and I'm gonna be at the top. So it's not gonna be one single thing I need to improve on if I could just focus on my whole self as a as an artist. Yeah.
what would you tell your younger self now, reflecting on what you've done so far, your accolades that you, you know what I'm saying, you know, accomplished, right? What would you, what would you tell your younger self? Uh, keep going. Just keep going. Whenever you feel like it's dark, it's not. It's really not. Um, just shit like that, man. Just striving for success every time. Every time you get in the stoop, every lock-in. You could think the song is bad and 40 people will like it. 30 times than you did. That's it. For real. Yeah. And for the and for your fans or people that, you know what I'm saying, are upcoming fans of yours or anybody that aspires to be in your shoes, what would it be what would be a, a great message to convey? Mm. I would say shit music teaches you um, can apply to all aspects of life. Like anything you learn that sticks with you and resonates from a melody of a song, words of a song, anything, any any piece of 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 feeling that you get from music, you can apply that everywhere in your life. Cause shit never stops. Yeah, for real. And and as far as what you you know have upcoming, are there any projects that we should be on the lookout for? A lot, a lot. Everything I drop, you should be looking. Mm. What's the expected date? Because I know that you know. Two fourteen, three one, Ooh. and Diamond Boy in April. Put that shit in your calendar. <laughs> Put that shit in your calendar. But uh, that will wrap up our interview, brother. I appreciate you speaking with me, talking with me again for having me, bro. All right, and I hope you guys got some insight about who Javi is, and definitely um, be on the lookout for some projects. Like I said, make sure you put that on your calendar. You heard the dates. Yeah. Um, with that being said, man. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And also, follow my man on Twitter as well as Instagram. D.O.D., right, man. We hold it down. We out. We doing it, man.